Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at issues you may run into when you import a Revit file into SketchUp. So to be clear, we're not going to talk about the import process. I'll link to a blog down below where we talk about uh, you know, setting up your Revit model to best import into SketchUp. What I'm talking about is the state that the geometry is in when it shows up in SketchUp. So what are some things that you may have to do to just kind of clean your model up so it's more usable in SketchUp after it comes out of Revit? So that's what we're going to take a look at. And we're going to hop in and take a look at an imported SketchUp model. Well, it's a SketchUp model. An imported Revit model that is now a SketchUp model you know what I'm talking about. Let's hop in. All right, so here's my model. This model is now a SketchUp model. It began life as a Revit model. So we can see what's in here. Um, you can see just by looking through the windows, it's fairly simple on the inside. We have a, you know, kind of this, this front right here, this lower level, and we have some decks coming up. We have some repeating doors and windows, a um, couple floors, a couple roofs, a couple walls, uh, a little bit of everything right here. Um, pretty simple. It's not super complex, but uh, you can see the geometry came in very nice. It does look, it's not beautiful, it's not perfect, but it, uh, it'll it definitely work. It gets gets the point across of the building I'm looking for. So let's dive deeper a little bit into what we have here. So one of the things I like to always look at, of course, is tags. How is this organized? And it does organize pretty well when it breaks down the families and imports them in. It does tag them on their own. So over here, I do have windows separate from walls separate from stairs, which are inside. I have to turn my walls off and you can see the stairs. There we go. Stairs disappear there. Uh, roofs, 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 uh, railings, floors, doors, curtain walls, and panels. So it does do a good job of breaking everything apart there. That's really helpful. That, that in and of itself is, uh, you know, big kick forward. If you're working off a Revit model and you have to detail it out in SketchUp, something like that, this is a big step forward. It's really nice. Um, as far as how everything is grouped, if I double click into this group, uh, I can see you can click into different pieces. So let's do this. I'll click into this wall and then we'll go ahead and hide the rest of the model so you can see what exactly shows up as a wall. Again, looks pretty nice. It's nice. I don't know if this is actually solid. Is it solid? Let's pick see what it says. Ooh, it's a solid component as well. That's great. Um, so yeah, this stuff looks pretty good. Uh, there is a only a certain amount of information. So this is, you know, just a, if I delete a face off here, it's not like we have additional materials in there, but it does look pretty good. Some of the spots that I've seen run into, right, is when I start getting into the smaller detail pieces, the, 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 the smaller families uh, that come in, is this stuff ends up being a bunch of geometry in a container. So in and of itself is not bad. This is not bad to have this all be one big solid piece. If I was modeling it, I would probably go a little bit further and maybe like break out some of this stuff where this outside trim would be one group. Inside trim would be a separate group. My, my panes would probably be their own groups or components uh, where Revit kind of dumps all the geometry into one piece. Again, not a deal breaker, not a problem necessarily, but if you are responsible for any kind of detailing or adding additional material, something like that, you may want to go through and, and do some editing. The nice thing is that this does come in as a component. You can see up here, if I pick one of these, it tells me there's 10 in the model, so five per floor. So if I do come in here and spend the time to get this all properly grouped, like I said, group my trim here and then group my other trim. I only have to do it once because it'll be reflected in all the copies. So that's really nice. Um, another spot that you may want to be, you can see that there's materials on here. It did put materials onto these different uh, items. I don't know exactly what the logic is that it does that by, if this is what it looks like in Revit or if this is a, you know, replacing a specific material with a material that is a SketchUp model material. But one of the things I've noticed is that the orientation is uh, basic. So in here, here's my, you know, I'm assuming these are supposed to be wood grain. 
um, in here, wood grain's running against the length of the material, so I'd probably want to flip that. Uh, same thing here. If I was modeling this, I would probably, you know, put diagonals across here and here, and then, you know, flip this material right here. I'd take this texture, position it, and then six pins, rotate that 90 degrees. Like that to make it look more like you know trim would actually look so not a not a deal breaker of course but if the purpose of having this in SketchUp is to make it a good looking model it's quick and easy to walk through which is what we hear a lot of people the reason they bring it in in the first place that's the kind of cleanup you might want to do some of the other things again just noticing not again not a problem but uh, I do have geometry running through geometry and again since this is all loose geometry um, it is literally just faces passing through faces. So this might be a spot where you want to do some intersecting and clean up. Um, railing's a little bit different since this is all one piece. These aren't components. Um, or I'm sorry, these rails aren't components. The verticals are. So what you could do in theory is come in here into this, right click, intersect face with model, which will give me the rectangles where it hits those other pieces over to this vertical on the other side, same thing, intersect faces with model. That'll give me the lines there. So when I come out here, it looks like they intersect. Sorry, I'm having a little, little jumpy model. Uh, I'm not sure why that is, but yeah. So then it looks like I have those nice clean intersections. They're actually a facade on the component. The, this geometry, loose geometry still just runs through, but you can see that looks a little bit cleaner. And it's pretty easy because those uprights are components. I'm not sure why the horizontal pieces uh, don't end up that way. Um, but yeah, that's the the biggest the biggest issues I've seen with coming in is the materials are uh, need, need some fine tuning, and then some of the components need a little bit of cleanup. For the most part, like I said, the biggest part that's nice is those that automatic tagging makes it very quick, very easy to sort through the model. Uh, I'm going to turn off my roofs. It's still weird. It sounds weird to me. Turn my walls off and I can hop in here and like look at something like the stairs. Those look pretty good. Um, here's some stuff. That's that's probably just a weird thing in the model, having that trim right there. I might have to clean that up. But uh, you can see pretty easily what comes in, what doesn't, and then how it's organized. So some cleanup might have to happen, but it's not painful. It's not a ton. Um, and likewise, the materials that are in there or, or the the geometry that shows up in there is a great start for creating a very nice detailed model it's just a matter of cleaning it up once it gets imported into sketchup so there you go quick walkthrough um, i've had people ask me what does this look like what does this look like they haven't tried the importer if you are working where you regularly have to import or work with imported revit models uh, this kind of gives you an idea of where that's at. Um, if you haven't actually tried the Revit importer yet, I recommend doing a studio trial and trying it out because the time it is saved from like getting a DXF file out of Revit and trying to redraw everything, uh, it's it's amazing. It's it's so so worth it if moving from Revit to SketchUp is part of your workflow. I highly recommend checking out that piece of the SketchUp Studio offering. So uh, take a look. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, they'll leave us a comment down below. Have you worked with a lot of imported Revit files? Did I miss something? Do you have a quick and easy way to get things cleaned up and working in SketchUp? Or do you have an idea for another video, something we haven't covered or haven't covered for a while or you think you should go deeper on. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more. Let's show you something you want to see. Thank you.